Hey, welcome to the Polar Caps on Mars video. Um, the Polar Caps on Mars are mostly composed of dry ice, which is fro frozen carbon dioxide. I have a little video here. Um, this person is showing how to spice up a Halloween party using dry ice and punch. I'm going to play it and kind of do my own voice. Um, sorry for the lack of her audio, but anyway, so she's putting in the punch in the uh, in this bigger bowl. This is water ice, H2O, and and there's some of that in Mars's polar caps as well. So this is kind of a, a Halloween Mars polar cap simulation <laughs> in one sense. But then she's going to put in dry ice, which looks a little different than water ice, as you'll see. So here's some dry ice. It's really cold. You can see how it's um, how it's building up frost on the it's making the tongs really cold and building up frost. So this is dry ice. This is actually CO2, the stuff you breathe out um, when you respirate. And interestingly enough, dry ice doesn't turn into liquid carbon dioxide at um, on at normal atmospheric pressure on the Earth, it just skips that phase and goes straight to a gas phase, and that's why you get the cool kind of um, fog thing, because that's this is gaseous CO2, and it makes a nice effect for Halloween too. So, uh, like like our polar caps on Earth, the polar caps on Mars vary in terms of composition and size um, during the different seasons. Although on Earth they don't really vary in terms of competition, uh, <laughs> composition. It's more just the size. Uh, the seasonal cap is the cap that varies during the seasons, and it gets bigger and smaller as the temperatures on Mars rise and fall. The temperatures fall, it gets larger as uh, CO2 freezes, and as the temperatures rise, it gets smaller as CO2 goes into the atmosphere. The residual cap, meaning the cap that stays there throughout the year, that doesn't change because it remains frozen constantly. And those can are pretty much made up of mostly water ice, which um, stays as a solid, as ice form, with typical Martian temperatures. Uh, the maximum size at the, the northern cap, by the way, this is a picture of the northern cap, northern Mar Mars's northern polar cap. Uh, the maximum size of this cap gets to be about 3,000 kilometers wide. And that's because Mars is at perihelion during the northern winter. If you remember from uh, the orbital video, perihelion is when uh, the planet is closest to the sun in its orbit. And since Mars has such an eccentric orbit, uh, it's much closer during perihelion than during aphelion. And so the winter will be warmer and also shorter. Uh, and you can see here the north northern polar cap. Uh, this is these are pictures taken by the Hubble telescope. And it's kind of hard for Hubble to see the top of Mars. So this is actually like kind of like a composite of pictures. But anyway, you can see October of '96, big polar cap. March of '97, small polar cap. So I'll, this is this this would be a lot of just dry ice, and this is probably mostly water. That dry ice is now in the atmosphere. And again, um, the southern polar cap during the southern winter reaches about 4,000 kilometers. It's a bit bigger than the northern cap. That's because Mars is at aphelion, and so it's farther from the sun and makes for a colder, longer winter. And so the cap can get bigger. So the seasonal caps, these are, again, the ones that vary during the season because Mars has seasons and you know, it gets farther and closer from the sun, in addition to the tilt. The um, car carbon dioxide ice, or dry ice, forms at negative 120 degrees Celsius. And so um, when the winter temperatures are below this temperature, you'll get CO2 from the atmosphere freezing and forming like a thick frost layer on, on the caps. But in the summer, temperatures can get above this. And so the CO2 is going to evaporate, like kind of like you saw in this 
video here turned into a gas, although not quite as probably dramatic as that. And that will go into the atmosphere. And this the, that's a big big variation. Unlike the Earth, our, the Earth's atmospheric pressure is relatively more stable than than on Mars. Mars has a, a bit more extremes because it doesn't have a lot of um, absorbing features like we do on the Earth. But um, so the atmospheric pressure on Mars can change by up to 30 percent as the CO2 goes from the atmosphere, making the atmospheric pressure higher because you got more stuff in the atmosphere to in the winter when the when the CO2 forms uh, onto the polar cap leaving the atmosphere and lowering the pressure this picture shows you um, that CO2 frost so this is the northern hemisphere again the northern polar cap you can see this part is the main like the residual cap and in the winter you got this green here is uh, the CO2 frost and in the summer that disappears leaving more just water behind, wa water layer. So The residual cap, that's the cap that stays there throughout the year. Um, the, there's residual caps both in the northern pole and the southern pole. The northern cap is bigger. It's about a thousand kilometers across. And that's this, this guy right here. Um, and it's probably mostly actually water ice. There's probably quite a bit of water up there. This this little chart, I guess thanks to Los Alamos National uh, Laboratory, shows you water abundance. Blue is not much abundance at all, 0%. Red is 100%, so just a lot of water, m more water abundance. And you can see, actually, uh, probably technically hydrogen abundance, but that's a signal that that would be water, not uh, CO2, because here you got hydrogen in water, but no hydrogen in carbon dioxide. Anyway, so the northern cap, you can see, you know, it was kind of hydrogen all around here, but you know, right around the cap, you got quite a bit of water. In the southern pole, not quite as much. So there's a big difference there. Um, the southern cap actually gets quite a bit smaller, because as we'll talk about. Um, in the next slide or so, the the summer is much warmer in the southern cap because that's where Mars is closer to the sun. So it's only about 350 kilometers across, and it's probably mostly CO2 with a little bit of H2 with a little bit of water. So mostly carbon dioxide ice, dry ice, and you can see some water here, but not too much. These caps are actually probably pretty thick. We don't know for sure because um, you know you'd have to kind of go there and maybe drill holes in to see how thick it is or do some other things. But currently we don't have that good of an idea. But you know we can make some educated guesses and they're probably a couple kilometers thick. Probably quite a bit of water up there, which would be good for for um, you know having people on Mars, plenty of water to do to fulfill the needs of the people there. You can see pictures here. This is what what the northern polar cap looks like in the summer. Got a nice little interesting kind of canyon going on here. Southern polar cap in the summer. Pretty neat. And um, I think this is yeah, this is the last slide. So this is kind of what I was talking about in terms of perihelion and aphelion. So in um, when Mars is closest to the Sun, and if you remember from an earlier video, I showed you this picture, and it shows how Mars is much closer to the Sun during perihelion. It's only 1.38 astronomical units away from the Sun, versus in, at aphelion, it's 1.67, so quite a, a big difference. So when Mars is closer, that means um, it's summer in the south. And since it's closer, the summer is going to be hotter, and that's going to make the, the southern polar cap smaller. And in the winter, it's a, a milder winter because again, it's closer to the sun, and so it's not going to get so frigid because it is closer. So the winter is milder, and the cap doesn't get quite as big. It's only like 3,000 kilometers in size versus 4,000 for the cap at its largest in the southern winter. And again, the 
uh, probably most well, yeah, mostly definitely in the winter it's going to be CO2 because that's where the frost will will collect. The CO2 will come from the atmosphere and freeze down on the, onto it. But the southern polar cap is probably mostly CO2 with a little bit of water, as we saw in this picture here. In aphelion, uh, when Mars is farthest from the sun, then um, the southern winter is cold. Notice the seasons switch. Uh, north is the winter at perihelion. North is the summer at aphelion. South is the summer at perihelion. South is the winter at aphelion. So since it's farther from the sun at aphelion, it's much colder. You get a nice, long, cold winter. And that allows the, the polar cap to really build up. The CO2 will really collect from the atmosphere and make a, uh, a polar cap that's, that can be up to a thousand kilometers larger than the polar cap in the northern winter. And again, it's the northern summer is mild. It doesn't get too hot like it does in the south um, because it's farther away from the sun. And so the cap, the northern cap, won't melt as much. It'll only go down from 3,000 to 1,000. So you want to be comparing south to south. So in the winter, the southern cap is 4,000, and then it melts way, 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 way down in to 300, only 350 kilometers because of the hot summer. The northern winter, the cap starts at 3,000, and then it melts only down to 1,000. It doesn't melt as much because it's that's a milder summer. And that cap is again mostly probably mostly water, ice, H2O ice, as seen in this picture here. H2O. And that's pretty much it for the polar caps. Um, there's a bit more I could talk about, but a lot of it is, you know, well, mostly what I'm talking about is is, is a lot of theory. Um, so we can really, I mean, we're, we're sending a lot of probes. We've got the Curiosity probe there now, and the Spirit and Opportunity probes have collected a lot of data, but those are so localized, you know, the, that you, you can't really get planet-wide data. And even with the satellites we have orbiting Mars, you know, there's still so much we have to learn about Mars. So, you know, I c in f five, ten years, this video is probably going to be outdated very easily, most of what's on here. And so it's kind of exciting. Anyone, any of you interested in studying Mars, there's a lot to learn. So, all right, um, I will see you in the next video.